this is your usual way like mm. uh, is it like a really decision you made like you want to leave a car and just uh, be flexible and go always like with public it didn't start that way mm -hmm. so when I first came um, because I've only ever lived in Australia mm -hmm. and the UK, I'd never driven on the right side of the mm -hmm. road before. So when I first came to Hamburg and I didn't have a car, I thought, ah, oh, well, maybe in the beginning I'll just like take transport and see how Safe. that how it goes. And and then I just got got used to it. Got, mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, where I live as well, it's uh, having a car is is not not a, it's not really possible. So. Um, yeah, yeah it, just, it just it became just from habit really, and but I'm glad I did. I don't miss having a car. So you stick, like, nah. stick to it. <laughs> no, I think so. Yeah, and as I say, when those days come where you need it for something for moving furniture or I don't know, yeah, as you say, if the weather's really bad, you have the options yeah. for car sharing anyway. So um, yeah, no, nah, it's it's just yeah, it was born out of out of habit in the beginning, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've stuck with it now. It's been nearly two years, so. Yeah. Um, surprisingly. Yeah. Cool. Mm. <laughs> and um, I know since you're from Melbourne, was it like you always used public transportation or have you lived a bit more outside so you normally had your car and then it's yeah. new here? Yeah, it's definitely new here. Yeah. Um, Australian public transport is <laughs> is not, not really an option at all. It for the city. Yeah, I mean, um, in where I grew up, I grew up quite far out of the city okay. and, and you know, in Australia, everything is so spread out. Like, you know, I used to have to get the bus for 45, 50 minutes to get to school every day. You know, there's nothing's really close by. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been since I came to Germany that the public transport's been more, more of an option. Even in the cities I lived in, in England, mm -hmm. not so much. So, no, it's 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 nice to not be so reliant on, mm -hmm. on a car. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. And. Um, since this is not really common to be honest mm. for a football play, is it something that you guys talk about in the locker room? Has anyone asked you ever like what's wrong? I think I think it was in the beginning, but um, I think just now it's just normal, you yeah. know, for everybody. And um, you know, I think uh, you know, even I, I know Dapo when he first signed mm -hmm. was was he was coming up to the Colau on the bus as well, and a few other players of. Maybe when they have something up going on with their car, of have used transport as well. So that's nah, a good thing when, when people do it. And yeah. as you say, and even the car sharing, I know a lot of guys use that as well when, mm -hmm. when it's an option. So yeah, I think it was maybe in the, in the beginning, everyone was a bit like, <laughs> Are you okay? What's, yeah, what's happening? <laughs> like, everything okay? But, but now it's not. Yeah. Have you ever like missed your stop and then go further? I have actually, actually very recently with, with Jonas. Yeah, yeah we, we were on the bus together and we were just chatting and we were talking and as we, I don't know, we looked up and we were driving past the collar and we were both like, oh my God, yeah, we've, we've missed it. So we had to go to the next stop and walk all the okay. way back. So, yeah, That's no. Um, but I've, you know where we have to go out today? Yes, it's, it's okay. We won't miss it just okay, now. We'll be so fine. Well, but, um, okay, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, yeah, if you're speaking with someone and you get distracted yeah. and then you're like, oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's going to be a problem. I've had a few little dramas along the way. I left my phone on the bus one time, I which was, someone. yeah, yeah, which was, which was a good one. But, but uh, someone answered the phone, yeah, right? A good Samaritan was, a, yeah, was, was kind enough to give it back to me. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, it's been, there's always a little story yeah. sometimes here and there, but uh, mostly drama free <laughs> so what do you do you normally if you don't have to chat with me you mm. listen to music or you reading books or yeah. how do you use your time here yeah well that's the best thing about it is the time that you get you know mm -hmm. like um, it is quite therapeutic you know to listen to a new album or read something or mm -hmm. read the news sometimes yes, even just you know make a phone call or speak to my parents or something so um, I use the time in kind of all different ways but it's nice to have that I know half an hour mm -hmm. in the morning where you can actually you know, do some do some things that you wouldn't normally have the chance to do. Yeah, mm. can imagine. And mm. have you ever experienced like fans that come up to you and recognize you? Occasionally, but mm -hmm. normally it's uh, you know it's just you know good luck on the weekend or you know okay. nice to see you or something. It's never 
disturbing. Being, being disturbing, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, only, only match days. <laughs> match days are the one when I think everybody knows they have, <laughs> they have free reign on you. So, um, but during the week, it's, yeah. it's pretty chill. But you usually go casual, but maybe yeah. we can try it with a trigo set. Oh, yeah, like it yeah, yeah. <laughs> shin pads, boots, <laughs> the lot. We yeah, will see what everything, happens. yeah. I think I'd be in a bit more, a bit more trouble. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. Mm -hmm. So I think next station is ours. Yeah, next and then one. what we're we doing then? And then we're jumping on the bus on the on the bus up to Kolarstrasse. Okay. Perfect. But to be honest, it was uh, yeah. I just I chipped a tooth last weekend. Um, I broke one of my one of my teeth, so that's why I need to go to the dentist. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's all right. Was it like in the, um, like um? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a. I've never had it before, and then two times in one season. Oh. After the derby, um, I chipped like four teeth. Yeah, um, after the derby, I already had I already had my eye, oh my and then I had four four. <laughs> I chipped four teeth in the same game. I jumped with the goalkeeper, and he punched me in the face because <laughs> I'm always going for headers where I shouldn't where I shouldn't go for them. <laughs> so I end up hurting myself. Oh. But and no, what are they doing two in one. Then? I think they will just. Uh, trim it down and then I don't know maybe put something on it but <laughs> yeah no I'm constantly putting my my face in danger and then there was a little moment in the Strafraum as well in the second half <laughs> with that one of their players and Ma Maurides has came to me and said uh, I will never defend you in a fight again because you got a yellow card so oh, yeah. he, he, but he came to defend me so I appreciate that yeah, yeah I saw it I just uh, saw <laughs> so Eric like push, pushing uh, Mauri away yeah. like or yeah. Jakob some yeah. of them I think yeah. he's maybe a bit more dangerous than yeah you. exactly <laughs> I also I also did start that argument also by <laughs> yelling at a guy when he was on the ground so <laughs> Yeah, you know, I it's can't. Okay. I can't talk too much. That was probably my and fault. And there, you lost the piece of teeth. No, it wasn't. It wasn't in this one. It was in a different one. But yeah, it happens. It's super quiet. And actually, sometimes when I'm standing at the bus stop here at Hohelufbrucke, a lot of the boys drive up oh, past really? here. So sometimes I'll just hear a toot of the horn, and someone but they will take just you with you. yeah, they do sometimes. Okay. Yeah, when they see me, yeah. when they see me. Get so that's it. always nice. I always uh, see that some of the guys are coming together. Like it's not that everyone is always using their own yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. We are quite uh, good at sharing. And mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Especially around games and stuff mm -hmm. as well. Boys, a lot of boys will share yeah. share cars on the way in. Um, but yeah, no, and, and even sometimes if. Sometimes guys are going to the city or going driving. They know that they're going to drive down St. Pauli Way. They'll kind of drop me off as well. So it's nice. It's good to everyone's always helping each other in that way. What is something you always like have to show from Hamburg? Like what are some points where you say, oh, you have to see? We always say like Hamburg, there are always lots of, they're not really nice things to see in Hamburg. But for me, Hamburg's a very livable city. Mm -hmm. It's a great city to just hang out in and just like eat, drink, go for a walk, chill. You know, it's obviously, um, we always go like to the nice parks, Plattenbloom and mm -hmm. Stad Park. Um, for me, Miniature Wonderland is essential for anyone who comes here. So I always try and get them to go to Miniature Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, really? I love it. I think it's the coolest place ever. Like. <laughs> Really. But you notice what's happening in the stadium? They have like the uh, Volkspark Stadion. Yeah, of course. And yeah. And what's happening in there? If you press press the button, it's like they always oh, show um, the goal with um, it's a derby. Yeah. And we lose it, and they always uh, have it on screen. So. That's all right. We just skip that section. But also, I have some of my friends when they were here last time tried to put a little sticker on the Volkspark Stadion. <laughs> I said that's a good way to get yourself banned for life from Miniature Wonderland, so don't do not do that. But it was a nice idea. <laughs> so how often have you been there? <laughs> I've actually only been twice, but I always send people, ah, I always okay. make sure people go when they come. Um, but yeah, no, and then just nice into nice cafes, restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, the Alster also work for a nice place to hang out. Um, yeah, just most, most people come for the football. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. I had so many, all my family here for my birthday yeah. this weekend and like for most of them, they've just never been to a football, a football match like this before. Like it's a, just a... Because you left when you were 17, right? Mm -hmm. Australia, so mm -hmm. they didn't really get the chance to see you 
Yeah, I played professionally, but yeah. obviously they kept, they've all been to England and some of my family from, because my dad is from Scotland, mm -hmm. so my family came from the UK also. And for them, yeah, just the, the St. Pauli match day experience, it's just yeah, like, seeing it's all so Irvine different. Seeing all jerseys all over the place. Yeah. I recognize it. Yeah. I think it's like, it's the most sold uh, jersey from... Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you're just making that up? No. Or no? Okay. I tell it everyone. All right, cool. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. No, that's cool. Um, but yeah, just... But even being inside the stadium and seeing, you know, on the weekend, the activism and the, and the support for the women's movement and everything, mm -hmm. it's just like, for them, it's just... It's not just the football, it's the whole, yeah. the whole experience. It's just so unique, especially... It's kind of what I, you know, to what I've played in in the past and... Not to say that that was, you know, not great as well, but um, yeah, it's just, it's very different. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course, the drama on Saturday was, <laughs> made it a little bit more exciting as well. As you said, you like that um, it's not just about football, it's St. Pauli. Mm. Um, do you think this is like some of the parts that make you so successful here that you have like all this stuff around? Because you're someone who's into other topics than just football. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, rounded a, a lot of parts of my life together, you know, I'd, I'd already been involved working with our PFA mm -hmm. in Australia, so our union, and now mm -hmm. obviously working more with FIFA Pro mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just coming to St. Pauli and being part of activism and, and people who are so active in social issues. Yeah, I think it's just ignited everything, you know, into one way and that definitely helps me with football, you know. Um, some people can point to it as like distractions or doing other things but for me when you have um, everything in your life you know outside of football as well is is it gels together really well then that only helps your performances on the pitch so for me um, it's been it's been great helping me kind of grow as a player and a person yeah. all together so um, yeah and it's just the longer I spend here the more I feel that you know coming together which is which is really nice yeah have you ever had those uh, interests or is it like getting more when you came here? Or mm. No, I've definitely always had those interests. I've, I've always had those values, I guess, um, you know, and I've, I've, yeah, I've always been um, interested in, you know, in politics and, 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 and social issues and always followed them closely. But, um, you know, particularly surrounding the Qatar World Cup and, and moving into these spaces where I was directly involved probably pushed me to to take a more active role mm -hmm. in these things and yeah and of course being at a club like this it, it just supports you being able to have that voice more publicly. So this is the last path we have yep, to Yeah, this is the last part, <laughs> the nice walk. This is this is the worst bit when the weather is terrible. The <laughs> the five minute walk down the street. If um, if I can avoid that usually then then I try to but um, yeah. Do you no. get in, you pick up by some as well. Also, also, I, yeah, this is where I try and keep an eye out for the guys driving up the street so yeah. that someone can pick me up. And You're always like this. <laughs> the other day, uh, I was walking up to these, uh, this, in, these traffic lights and mm -hmm. Eric, Eric was parked at the, at the lights. And I don't think he was paying attention, but I just walked up and like knocked on his window <laughs> and I scared him yeah, <laughs> quite, quite so. badly. I think he thought it was just some random off the street just like coming so and banging on his window. <laughs> No, I wouldn't have not have let him do that. So, lucky I didn't just open the door. Then he might have he might have driven away. This is this is normally the next gamble, but I think we're going to have no luck today. Uh, no. Nope. This is get you should get this on camera. The bet. You have this key, Tim. If you're watching, make me a key now. I've been waiting for it for a year. <laughs>
in the hood. <laughs> yeah, back in the local. Yeah. How was training today? Yeah, really good. Um, we had a free day yesterday, so the intensity was high today. Everybody was fresh. <laughs> and yeah, looking forward to Sunday. Nice. And now we're going to go to grab a coffee at some of your favorite coffee spots. Yeah, today. yeah. We're going to go down to Playground Coffee, one of the you know, best local coffees in Sao Paulo for me, for sure. So yeah, we're going to go nice. check that out. Perfect. Is nice. it something you usually do after training? You just hang around here and get some coffee with probably Jamila, your girlfriend? Yeah, or... yeah. We, we're always kind of around the local places mostly. Um, but yeah, after training for sure, like to, we like to just chill out and do that kind of stuff if we're not, you know, out going to gigs or doing mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, so yeah, no, it's, this is one of the places we come to sometimes. But since we go like Ripaban, have you been uh, at a lot of places here because you like to go to concerts or? Yeah, I've been to most of the, you know, the big music venues along mm -hmm. here, like Mojo, Molotov. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of the docks as well mm -hmm. uh, reopened and played a couple of, I've been to a couple of gigs there too. So there's so many great places and so many good bands coming playing here all the time. So there's always, always something to see. So you would recommend everyone? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. If you get a chance to come listen to some live music anywhere, uh, for sure. I think this is one of the best places to, best places to do it. Have you ever made up your mind what you're going to do after your career? Is there anything you have in mind already? Um, I know you want to be a rock star. Yeah, listen, <laughs> I think those days are, are past me now. But um, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, I go, I get, as of my kind of life's changed and everything, I, I go through different phases, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I love, at the end of the day, my, my you know, great love of, is, and passion is, is football. And mm -hmm. I'd love to get into coaching or stay mm -hmm. involved in the game. but. Since I've started a bit working with the unions and being more involved in working on the, um, you know, working on the rights of players and human mm -hmm. rights in general, that's another thing I've, I'm, I'm very interested in. So I'm interested to see, you know, what options open up to me. But at the at this moment in time, it's hard to. Yeah, ever we focus don't want you anything. to think about yeah. anything else. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's so funny. As soon as you turn 30, and everyone's like, oh, yeah. so you know, what's happening after football? I'm like, I've still got good years left. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. 40? So um, Pizarro yeah. was someone? I don't yeah, know if you know exactly him. Yeah, exactly right, for sure. He did for a long time. Yeah. No, so, yeah. Um, but no, it is, of course, you always start to think about these things more just mm. the older you get in general and, you know, your passions change and, um, you know, all, all the, the things that you, you become more passionate about start to appear as some kind of other opportunity. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what happens in the next few years. Jackson for the coffee and for taking us with you this day. We have to leave you alone now because uh, you told us before. Yeah, off to the dentist. Yeah. yeah, for the second time this season with a broken tooth. So, <laughs> well, hopefully the last one this season. Yeah, part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. No worries, guys.